Mom started us out at Midway Baptist Church. We went Wednesday night, Sunday morning, and night. Walked Edgemont School in the coldest winter in hand-me-down clothes and off the night for school. Teachers always made us sit in a cloak room or get swats for being late. We all hated school. Mom. Sometimes Clarence took us into the Fifth Avenue Theater on 59th and East St. Louis State Street. It was five cents to get in the afternoon, 10 cents at night. The Majestic was high class, 25 cents and 50 cents. Movies, all the stars smoked in the movies. Mom never got to go. She always had work to do. When she left her job, times was very hard. God's grace was the blessings we received. In the junior high school, me and Nancy worked at Woolworth's door. Back then, they let you work at 13, 14. We got the bus, go over to Washington Avenue. There was a big F.W. Woolworth store. They hired me and Nancy. I worked behind the jewelry store, the, and they had tokens, plastic tokens. They, you paid your taxes, but you got that so many tokens back, and that was your change back. And then when you paid the taxes on what you bought, you paid with these plastic tax tokens. We worked there till we got we get paid in an envelope on Friday nights, and then. Mom didn't want us going across the St. Louis no more, so we started working for a lady called Miss Shepherd right down the street from Clark Junior High School. They owned the East St. Louis Press. And she was an elderly lady, and she couldn't do a whole lot. She'd have us vacuum with one of these old vacuums, wash her windows, do her dishes, and stuff like that. And she'd give us like $10 a week. And we was rich. I mean, we'd come home, Mom always got most of it. I told Nancy on the way home, I'm going to take part of my money and buy a pack of Lucky Strikes and learn how to smoke. And she said, okay, I'll do it too. She said, we'll, tell them we'll play sick. We won't go to church. It was a Wednesday. We won't go to church. We'll both be sick. So I had them Lucky Strikes and I couldn't wait for Mom to leave. And I was just lighting it up and putting it in my mouth when the door, door flew open and there was Mom. Man, she grabbed that cigarette in the pack and she tore them up, bent me over her knee. I mean, she really good, walked me some good ones. And she said, you didn't think I would know you was going to be smoking? She said, I, what makes you think you're big enough to smoke? How'd she figure it out? Nancy told her. Nancy had been, Nancy was always a snitch. She was always a snitch. I was always a joker in the family. I thought everything was funny. Us kids, we played tricks on each other. Played putting the tail on the donkey with the good stick, ha ha. Nancy was always a snitch. She couldn't keep a secret. And Ruth was a cat lover. Always had cats. Lars was always a boss, and I never remembered Raymond. He left too soon. Red and Clarence, they were always getting in trouble with the law. Jerry was the movie star, at least he thought. Jimmy was always the preacher and good-hearted. Charles always was the mama's baby. My mom washed all the clothes on the washboard and hung them out to dry, even when it was cold. I remember snow drifting into the back door time. Anyway, we was always fed clothes and prayers that Mom had each day, and we was blessed to have a mom like that. In summertime, we played baseball with a stick and a rock, and we had very few toys of any kind. When Dolores married Lucky, her first husband, he seemed to have a good job. He bought us a doll and shoes at times. And at Christmas, we got boxes of food sat on the porch, by strangers, and some was said by the Marines. Mom always prayed for that help from God, and she said it came from him too. And we got color book crayons and Christmas candy, and sometimes a ham or a whole chicken. One time we found a whole chicken in a cage on the front porch at Christmas. 
when mom got enough money to get a radio on her birthday, when we was from her sister, Aunt Hilda, we sat in the yard and listened to it for hours. The Lone Ranger, Gene Autry, The Shadow Nose, and news about the war was on when I was really little. This time I'm going back about five, six. One of the first things I remember, we didn't have a radio on the Jap bomb Pearl Harbor, but our neighbor did. And she came over and said the Jap bomb Pearl Harbor. My dad, not, uh, my dad was still alive at the time. My dad, my mom, and all of them was like crying, really, and I thought, well, I didn't understand what a Pearl Harbor was. Mm -hmm. That's my first memory. I don't remember anything before that. Later when I married Jim Cheryl, we moved to an apartment over his parents' house. Forty dollars a month. I went to work at Bemis Bag and folding tents. It was hard. No breaks, 30 minutes lunch, standing all day. I had to quit when I got pregnant with Jimmy. After he was born, I was a housewife and mother. I went to work for Christ for the Christmas holidays at Famous Bar, and I got to wear high heels, dresses only. About two years, I got pregnant with my son, Rod. When I got married to Jim in 1952, July 24th, Jimmy was born in July 22nd, 1953, and Rod was born June 28, 1956. And then Glenn was born on Christmas Day in 1958. Vicki was born on February 24, 1960. And Joe, January 10, 1962. I divorced Jim in September 1976 and married Nelson Flagg on March 24, 1979. Then we married in the church in June the 1st, 1983. We had two anniversaries. I met Nelson sitting at a bar in St. Charles at Three Flags. Our eyes met and a storybook romance began. He was never married and I never really did not want to marry again. But our love was so great, he said he wanted me for his life and I him. So we tied the knot. So happy we made that choice. He was my knight in shining armor, and I never regretted marrying him. He was the king of my heart. My sister Nancy and RV become our closest friends and traveling companions. We went to Alaska, cruises, many different towns. We went <clears throat> to Puerto Rico, Costa de Campo, Barbados, Virgin Islands, and five cruises in my life. I got to go to Rome, Italy with Nelson and Alaska. Above all, he taught me how a man is a man and how to love myself and be unafraid. I have had a great life and looking forward to the future, hopefully with grandkids and greats. Lost Nelson February 11th. 2008 and lost Glenn August the 2nd 2009